I live here all my life up until 20 years ago. I was here for 54 years. I've been here all my life. Um, me and my little sister Susie grew up in the house that I'm living in now. And my father started off breeding. Cattle him took over here in 1st of January 1946 and then come up here with uh, staunch uh, Hereford cattle. And then they uh, started mixing uh, Bosindicus cattle in with them and ended up with a, with a breed of cattle, now which they call drought masters, and they have served us brilliantly for the last 50 years. Every year was feast or famine. You either had lush grass and cows couldn't possibly eat it. And then all of a sudden, within say two months, it had browned off. And then you got four or five months at the end of the year. It was starvation virtually. He copied a fellow that lived down from air. There's a fellow down there doing it at a much smaller scale. So he sort of expanded his thinking a little and we thought instead of having a, a make 100 metres long, we'll have one two kilometres long. And, uh, and it worked. So that's what we do. We try to retain the moisture and we keep in retaining the sediment. Keep catching your water. You're trying not to let that rainwater go down the watercourse and get away into the river system. Uh, you have a lot better grazing on those patches. It retains your moisture for up to six months. It improves your drought proofing. To learn the process of beef grazing is not a simple process. There's a lot of trial and error to real life. And if you make too many errors, you go broke. And that's, that's the same with most businesses. That's why that background knowledge that your, your parents and grandparents have is so critical because they've had those trials and errors as well and they can pass on what has worked for them. You also have to learn that yourself by going out in the paddock and studying the livestock. You also have to go and make sure that the livestock aren't you know, getting too low in condition or the fences are up or the waters are clean and all that kind of gear so that the animals are doing well. You have to understand how much grazing pressure you can put on a certain soil type in a certain pasture. All that is background knowledge and that doesn't come easy. Granddad's moved away from working on the property by the time I sort of got halfway through my schooling life and I've worked with Dad after that. And my granddad was always there to talk to. But you know, it, it's been a great because both of them have had knowledge of Kirkney and Granddad's had knowledge of the beef industry that, that's invaluable. And Dad's always had knowledge of Kirkney. If you're having a problem, you always go back to the knowledge base and ask him what, what we could do. And, and in that regard, it's been great. Your ultimate goal always is to produce the best article to go to the abattoir. In our case, it's a, it's a fattened bullock or a fattened cow. So you start your procedure right when you get select the, the bull and the cow to come together. That's always been the goal. You always do the internal running of the property as best you can in that regard. And there's processes that I'm trying to improve in that all the time. It's the sheer fact that you have to produce this article in a way that the consumer believes is done in the best interest of the animal and the environment. The modern consumer is, is interested in how the animal is treated, was it done environmentally, um, and a whole other range of, of different processes that they, they want to know about. They may not always understand the complete process, but they do want to know about it. In the modern world, you've got to do all, all of that in an economic envelope that your property can produce. Uh, you can't go out and just do the best of everything if you can't pay for it at the other end. And that's the challenge, that's the economic challenge of it all. You can only do as much as what you can make.
Well, it's, it's lifestyle for starters. You know, if you don't like what you're doing, you don't get up and keep doing it every day. So you've got to like what you're doing. So if you do like what you're doing, it's easy to get out of bed in the morning uh, and get outside into the heat or the cold or whatever you're working in. Like, like Len said, you've got to enjoy what you're doing. And if, like, if you don't enjoy what you're doing, well, give it away. You've got to keep all the land in a good enough condition so that when you're finished with it, whoever you're handing on to, you can make a go of it. You've got to work it and spell it and work it and spell it and, and keep it in a good enough condition so that whoever's behind you can take over from what you're doing. So that's, that's basically it. You just look after it. You look after your land. If you look after it, it'll look after you. Uh, yeah, keep it, uh, yeah, keep it as weed free as you can and keep the uh, sediment runoff as least you can, can. Most of it is, it's common sense, if you abuse it, well, you won't last long, you're, you're on the double queue.